Well, call it spending a healthy uh, time, healthy amount of time away from the office. Call it looking for some new changes here in what's been a tough period for American workers. But a new survey from Bankrate.com was digging into the uh, attitudes among the American workforce for changing things up a bit and the surprising amount, I found it surprising, 55% of those in the workforce say they're going to be looking for a new job in the next 12 months. It's pretty surprising given the way that we've seen kind of people start to go back into the office, but uh, clearly some big demand for this great reshuffling to continue. And for more on that in the poll, I want to bring on Mark Hamrick, Bankrate.com senior economic analyst joins us right now. And Mark, uh, I mean, Maybe the number is not high, depending on what your experience has been in the pandemic. But, I mean, talk to me about what you saw when you dug into the numbers here for what uh, the American workforce is saying now. Yeah, Zach, thanks for having me. I think it's quite stunning. I mean, you have a majority of the workforce, those who are either working or looking for work, saying they're going to look for a new job in the next year. And those numbers go high. We're talking about younger workers, those 40 and younger, uh, you know, Gen Z and millennials, and uh, also lower paid workers, it turns out makes sense, right? Because you want to sort of better your financial plight by finding a job that pays more. But I also think that when we dig deeper into the findings, that sort of what they're looking for in the work, they're looking for more flexibility. They're working, looking for uh, better hours, perhaps, a along with uh, not necessarily the top thing, but they're looking for better pay or, or uh, more vacation time, more time off. And so I think that the pandemic has given us a lot of opportunities, along with the sort of negative parts of it, opportunities to uh, reflect on what's important with respect to our work and lives. And uh, so I think that's showing up in the survey. You know, Mark, it's interesting, especially when you mention the younger generations, uh, Gen Z and millennials. And I'm, I'm curious, do you think this is kind of a unique moment in time where they can make that leap in their career, get that higher pay versus, okay, I'll do five years here, then I'll move on and kind of gradually build up uh, that salary? would love to explore that further, just the opportunity available to young uh, workers. Well, I think this is a remarkable time for all workers and perhaps more so for younger workers, as you point out, when we you know acknowledge that According to the Labor Department, there's 10.1 million jobs open out there, and that was as of a couple of months ago. That number may have actually risen since then. You know, I think that always uh, we think in terms of our American economy as one that does provide opportunity, and, and the biggest opportunity, of course, is for younger workers who are looking to uh, better their incomes and, by extension, lift their own personal finances. But I think to your question, I, I think this is a remarkable point in time because we have all of these kind of cross currents, some headwinds, some tailwinds. Uh, and for those who really are inclined to look for work right now to optimize their uh, employment, uh, I would say do it and do it now. Yeah, Mark, I mean, when you, when you dig deeper into the data here, too, we just showed that chart there in terms of what people are looking for on the job hunt. And, you know, traditionally it might just be pay. But now, having tasted maybe some of the flexibility there in terms of, you know, the hybrid uh, abilities to go into the office, not go into the office, health, time off. Uh, I mean, what do you think has changed maybe about the pandemic in terms of what this, this new contingent's looking for as they weigh options? Well, uh, look at the screen, folks. We're working from home, right? And so uh, that was not anything that we had done before. And and we're perfect cases in point here that, you know, this is forced transitions that perhaps even two years ago we couldn't have possibly imagined. And so, uh, you know, so many workers across the spectrum have done uh, much the same thing and having learned that this can be done and I think that's almost the most important point it's been demonstrated that it can be done uh, and in many cases productivity is enhanced so the secret's out managers know that uh, workers know that and so uh, a lot of people want to retain at least some of that and to have the opportunity to work from home uh, as that chart indicates at least one day a week and if not full time with, uh, you know, about one in five workers saying that's what they would like. Mark, I know you played a critical role in this uh, research from beginning to, to end here. And I'm curious, too, if um, there's something in there that maybe surprised you that you view um, will be a long lasting trend that maybe you didn't expect at the beginning of this. Well, uh, we highlighted that in the headlines. And so, you know, we did gravitate toward the fact that so many Americans do look to be making a change in the next year, including, by the way, 28 percent of workers who were not currently looking for a job 
said that they would be looking for a job in the next year. So, you know, maybe they're waiting to strike at the right time there. But I think, you know, most importantly, it's this isn't just a story for workers, right? It's also a story for managers who need to anticipate that volatility with respect to their staffing and try to really focus on retaining uh, the team members that they currently have. What do they need to do to do that? And then to think about seizing upon the opportunity to hire strategically, perhaps add to diversity, equity, and inclusion during this time when there is such mobility in our society. Mark Hamrick, Bankrate Senior Economic Analyst, thank you so much for stopping by.